but on. All right, cool. Dollar in the dream, dollar in the dream. Dollar in the dream, dollar in the dream. Dollar in the dream, dollar in the dream. What's going on, everybody? I go by the name of Dre Manning. This is Dollar in a Dream. I created Dollar in a Dream, aka Dad, to help other filmmakers follow their dreams while I continue to follow mine. Although there are numerous blogs, websites, YouTube channels, and masterclasses out there, I figured I'd have a little something, you know, just a little special sauce that I could sprinkle on and give out to you folks. And that's why I'm here. I'm here to take my seat at the table of YouTubers, giving out filmmaking advice. My specialty happens to be sound, cinematography, director, editing, and just a little bit of colorist skills. I'm not a master colorist, I'm pretty decent. So with that said, let's get into this first episode of Dollar in a Dream. I'm gonna give you five, not one, but five myths that filmmakers use preventing them from starting their projects. Number five, possibly the one that stops many people from doing a bunch of things, money. Many filmmakers will stop doing everything that they need to do to get their project on a roll because they don't have the budget. I want you to pause this video for a quick second. Open up another browser, go back into YouTube, and type in a search browser, zero budget short films. You will be astounded by how many films show up that were shot with little to no money. You can even type in no budget short films, little to no money, and there's some phenomenal films made. Now, albeit, a lot of these films were shot by filmmakers who own their own equipment. Now, if you don't own your own equipment, I can understand why you can be a bit apprehensive. But here's something that you can keep in mind. Inside of your pocket, you have possibly one of the most powerful tools ever, a smartphone. These phones continue to get smaller. Their image creation continues to get bigger and bolder and better. You don't have a DSLR, use your smartphone. It's not about the tools that you have, it's about what you do with your tools. You can have the best camera in the world and still shoot the sh film possible. Another option, do Indiegogo, do a GoFundMe, but don't let that be the end all be all. If you don't raise the money or if you raise just enough money, whatever the case may be, don't allow that to be the reason that you don't proceed with shooting your project. You have to be willing to take a risk and shoot your shot. You know what? I like that, that's my slogan for now. Shoot your shot. Take a risk and shoot your shot. I get it, you don't have a lot of money. So also keep in mind when writing your scripts to keep that in mind as well. You don't have a Michael Bay budget, so you don't want explosives going off everywhere. Keep it simple, stick to what you have. I love gear, I'm a gear head. I have so much gear over here on my uh, on my shelves. I have some gear behind me and I, I, I love it. Possibly my kryptonite. Coming in at number four is having the latest gear. You have to become a master of the tools that you have. If you go out there and you try to buy every single camera or piece of equipment that comes out, when it comes out, you will never become the master of what it is that you have in front of you. Regardless if you have a crop sensor, or you have a APS-C, or you have a micro four thirds, whatever, whatever kind of sensor you have, Focus on becoming the master of that because when you upgrade to those bigger cameras, it should become a breeze for you. You should already know what it is that you want and you want to get out of those images instead of just saying, hey, look at what I have. Possibly one of my favorite YouTubers, uh, YC Imogen, I'm not sure where he's from, but he's pretty dope. He has the Sony a6300, the same camera that I'm using to film this. He had this camera, but then he also had an a7S. Mark II, I believe, and decided he only wanted to shoot with his A6300 when working on projects. That speaks in volumes. Use what it is that you have and become a master of that. Again, just like having a bigger budget, having the best camera possible does not make your film the best. You can shoot with a RED, you can shoot with an Alexa, you can shoot with a Blackmagic Ursa and still put out a film nothing is gonna save that all right so focus on the creativity aspect of it instead of the gear and since we're talking about gear let's also go up to number three 4k resolution so many people go nuts over 4k i gotta have this in 4k i want a 4k camera let me let you in on something shooting your videos in 4k unless your next step is to put them in some small theater to have them broadcasted for the world to see no one is really going to get the uh satisfaction of the 4k that you're shooting in not even you, especially if you're editing on a monitor that is 1080p. These two monitors behind me push out 1080p. I shoot on 4K. 
I downsized from 4K to 1080p during my editing process. Why? It's easier to work with on my computer and I can't tell a difference because I'm, I'm looking at a 4K image projected back in 1080p. Also, something else to keep in mind, if you're shooting for YouTube or whatever the case may be, when you upload your video, you know it goes through that, that YouTube com, uh, conversion that everyone talks about. But when someone is watching your video back on their iPhone, your iPhone screen resolution is 4K, but the playback resolution is 1080p. iPhones do not playback 4K resolution videos. So you might as well downsize it yourself. If you're gonna chase a 4K camera, keep in mind you're gonna turn around and downsize it anyway. Number two, um, this used to stifle me pretty often. I would come up with these amazing ideas, have this great script, have all my gear ready to go, have my entire crew ready to go, and then I'm stunted because I don't have actors. Yeah, actors. Actors are most likely a lot of the reasons people don't go out and shoot their films or say that they're not shooting their film. Oh, I don't have access to actors. I need professional actors. No, if you're a great director, a great director can turn the weakest actor in the world into a great actor. Why do I say that? Because I consider myself to be a great director. And a lot of the actors that I've worked with either never acted before or they've acted in minimal stuff. And just to show you, here's a little snippet of my short film that is coming out called One Year. One person is a stage actor, the other one has never acted in their life. You tell me if you can tell the difference. Always wildin' out, always assuming some dumb shit. I swear to God, man. Well, if you didn't always have some bitch in your face talking about <laughs> Martin's so funny. Listen, I ain't trying to hear this, all right? Uh, excuse me? Drop in those comments below. Let me know which one was a stage actor and which one never acted before. I'll let you know if you're right or wrong. Having access to actors and actresses should not be the reason that you don't pursue your project. Those should actually be the reasons that you push forward and you reach out to friends who might have some acting experience or no acting experience and you guide them. As a director of your film, it doesn't mean you just say lights, camera, action, cut. No, it means you direct the entire project. You are the leader. You are the Obama of this administration and you need to push them forward and push things forward. Will it be a bit harder? Yes. Could it be a bit stressful? Yes. But what in your life that you love has not been hard and not been stressful? I'll wait. Exactly. You have to be willing to just push forward. So sitting down and going, I don't have access to actors. I can't shoot this film. It's bullshit. It's complete bullshit, and you need to just go out there and find those people. Utilize Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, uh, Instagram, Reddit. The list goes on. If you have access to social media, you have access to a smartphone, you have the internet, you have no reason to say, I don't have access to actors. All you have to do is reach out to them. Most actors that are still working on building their name will take food transportation and footage for their reel. Now I'm not saying, hey, that's all you should offer, but if that's all you have, you should do so. And my last one, coming in at number one, is film school. I know, I know it's been talked about numerous times by numerous filmmakers and numerous YouTubers, I get it. Why do you wanna hear this from me? Well, I'm from two sides of this one. One, I'm a self-taught filmmaker. Two, I'm on my way to film school. Why, why? This is crazy, you already know how to shoot films, you already have an understanding, why would you go into film school? One, I just want a degree. I wanna show my kids that no matter how old you are, you can go back to school and attain a degree. But I also wanna get a degree in something that I love, not just, oh, let's get a random degree and say, hey, this is why you go to school. No, I'm gonna get a degree in something that I love and I enjoy doing. So I guess it's more ego, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, so, and, and, and two, uh, I wanna work, meet young filmmakers and other young filmmakers who we can actually grow together as we're on this journey. Um, even though I know I'm probably walking into this a bit further than many of them, but that's the fun part, is seeing someone learn these different things and you kind of learning from them. So, the pros and cons that I have of film school. I'm gonna start with my pros because I feel like my con will outweigh my pros all the way. You can learn a lot. 
If you're the type of person who needs to be inside of a classroom in order to learn, film school is the place for you. If you've watched numerous YouTube videos and you've read so many blogs and books and you feel like you're not retaining that information, maybe the classroom setting is for you. You meet new people. So many people late, like within this era of uh, fast information has become incredibly antisocial. We spend more time with our faces glued to our phones than we do with interacting with others. So maybe going to school for something you love, you get the chance to meet other people and meet them in real time and have these real debates and conversations rather than these, uh, these Facebook posts where you attack each other about why someone doesn't understand shutter speed and frames per second. I don't know. It's, it's, I don't know. Access to Pro Gear. My boy Dicky, check him out. His YouTube channel's right there. Uh, he went to Temple University down in PA, and one thing that he loved was that he had access to so many professional lights and professional cameras and professional rigs and things of that nature. I look forward to getting my hands on those things because I've never really touched, outside of a Blackmagic uh, cinema camera, which was my first cinema camera, what I sold, we'll get to that some other time. Uh, I've never really touched a professional grade camera. I've mainly messed around with DSLRs and mirrorless cameras. You have access to professors who are professionals in your field of choice. That is a super blessing. Not because you get to ask them a million and one questions and ask them if they can take you on a job, but because you get this opportunity to learn from them. You're paying to be in a classroom to learn from someone in your field. Again, if you're the type of person who needs to be inside of an institution in a classroom receiving directives from someone in order for you to retain information, film school is for you. The con that I feel like outweighs it all is the cost. It can be, film school can be rather expensive. If you're trying to go to one of the top film schools, you're gonna spend about $40,000 a year. Now, you can go to a non-traditional film school and spend anywhere between $4,000 and $9,000 a year. If you don't have financial aid uh, or a scholarship, these things will have to come out of your pocket or you'll have to get federal loans, which will put you in debt, right? And the first thing you're thinking is once you graduate is, yes, I graduated from school. Now I gotta get a job so I can pay off this debt. And you'll be more susceptible to taking any job. And when I say any job, I'm not talking about any film job. I'm talking about any job, like waiting tables, uh, flipping signs outside of a tax place, uh, working in a bank. And what happens is these jobs take away from the things that you really want to be doing, shooting your film. That decision comes down to you. What type of person are you? Are you the type of person who can get up, go out there, learn through experience, and continue to grow off that, make mistakes, put out ugly images, and be fine with the, with the response that you get from it, but learn from it and grow and become better? Or do you prefer to sit in a classroom, receive these lectures, these informative lectures from a professor in your field? Either way, I think it depends on you as a person, whether your film school should work for you or learning through different books and tutorials and things like that will help you and benefit you in the long run. That is a determination based on you and your finances. One last tidbit I wanna share with you guys. I do a lot of reading, so I wanna show you a couple books that I've been reading. So, for all my people out there who like writing screenplays, I have the Screenplay Bible, I believe it's called. I bought that off Amazon. It's, it's in my bedroom right now. I don't feel like going to get it. I also have uh, screenplay, screenplay, The Foundations of Screenwriting by Sid Field. I haven't had the chance to crack this one open yet, but... I got, uh, I, it was recommended by No Film School, which is an amazing website. Make sure you check that out. Also, one of my favorite directors, uh, I received a book of interviews from him, starting from his very first interview that he did for, uh, about Reservoir Dogs up to his interviews that he did for Glor Inglorious Bastards, Quentin Tarantino, very informative, another skill of uh, film school, uh, not even dropout, he didn't even go, um, but he did go to school for acting. Something that I'm trying to get better at is lighting for cinematography. So another book recommended by No Film School, Lighting for Cinematography. All the links to these books will be inside my description. Shot by shot, understanding your shots. Shoot, shoot, shoot. 
your shot. And this one I kind of like, it's it's a picture book. That's kind of childish, right? It's a picture book, but I like it. And it's um, pretty much showing you master shots, so showing you how to set up certain shots to uh, represent certain moods, such as tension, happiness, uh, anger, uh, sadness. Great book. Wow, um, damn. Those are my five myths. Why filmmakers say they haven't created their passion project or what's holding them up from their passion project. Look, this is just my opinion. Don't take this as the end all be all reasons why. If you know other reasons why, drop them down there. But also before you hit that into on that comment, think about it. Is this an excuse or is this an actual reason? If you've enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and comment. They go a long way. If you'd like to know what type of setup that I use to produce this video, there's a link down below to my kit where you can see exactly what I use to produce my YouTube videos. All of the books that I've showed in this video, I will definitely have the links for them down below in the descriptions as well. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for making my first video feel welcomed. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully it goes far. But one thing I want you to take away from all of this after everything thing is said and done is no matter what you do always shoot your shot i am dre manning this is dollar in a dream aka dad and thank you for making this an amazing experience i see you on the next one bow